we'll call it a special meeting for the Economic Development Authority for Friday, March 27, 2020, 2 p.m. to order. First item on the agenda is roll call. So we'll do an actual roll call to make sure we do have a quorum. So if each one could state their name that are out there on the phone. Or just, or you want Heather to call? I don't I care. Call. Okay, I Let, we'll have Heather do a roll call. All right, Commissioner Brom. Yes. Commissioner Yanni. Yes, I'm here. Commissioner Fix. Present. Commissioner Schwartz. No. Uh, Commissioner Schultz. We do have a quorum, though. So we do. We do have a quorum. All right. We do have a quorum, so we'll go on to item number two. It's a special meeting notice. We just need a motion to receive it and order it filed. So if somebody would like to do that. So moved. This is Susan. Somebody else. Second. second. Okay. Let's yeah. When that. you make a motion, second, and just say your name, then we know it too. So appreciate it. Thanks. Did somebody just join? Did somebody just come on? Nope, I haven't heard none. Okay, I'm not sure who got the second on that. I heard it, but who, yeah. who I think was it? Was it? Dan, right? Yeah, and it's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we do have a motion to second. Any more discussion? We'll Seeing none. Right. All in favor, say aye. No, we oh, need we to call. Oh, 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 all we, votes oh, have oh, we got a call for a roll. Okay. All, all votes roll call. All right, Commissioner Brom. We actually did it. Yes. Commissioner Fix. Yes. Commissioner Yanni? Yes. And President Schmitz? Yes. So we do have a quorum. So at this time, we'll go on to the next item, which actually we're going to skip this, and we're going to let Nicole give a presentation first. Okay. I think you all received this financial. It's just a brief financial summary, just giving you an idea of what's available to be used for different programs. Um, and it's just so I based it on um, – for the most part, we're just looking at the EDA funds and the Garden Terrace funds, and I left the smaller funds out of it because they're more uh, specific to what those are used for. So I started with um, the cash on hand at the beginning of the year, and um, which was uh, about $2.2 million. Took added in the budgeted revenue for the year, which is just over $1.1 million. I took out the expenditures and all of the um, contributions that have been approved up to this point, including for Herman Heights, German Park, um, the small businesses, the home buyers assistance, um, the school districts matching grant funds, and then the rec centers, um, the possible two hundred and fifty thousand. Um, and so that that total uh, brings us down to cash available of two just over two million dollars. And then if we take out the required reserves that we would like to have on hand of about three hundred and fifty thousand, that leaves about one point seven million available for different programs. Thank you. Nicole, anybody have any questions or concerns about this? Or If not, we can actually go on to item number 3.1, Emergency Relief Fund Creation. And Chris, you want to talk about that one? Yeah. Um, so due to um, the governor's executive order um, closing down uh, some businesses, we're looking at putting together um, a relief fund grant uh, to help those businesses um, kind of have some influx of cash before they can apply uh, for the available loans that are out there. Um, so this will help them pay rent that's kind of due in the next four days uh, and get them um, kind of stable floating into potentially applying for um, the state loan that's out there for those businesses and the federal loan that's out there for those businesses. Um, so we're looking at doing, uh, asking the EDA uh, to set up $100,000 for this fund. Um, the grant would be for $2,500. So that means at this point in time, we'd be able to help uh, 40 businesses. Uh, the businesses would that are eligible for this would be those closed due to executive order 20-04 and then also uh, in the clarification uh, executive order of 20-08 
Um, this would be on a first come first serve basis. Uh, if this program is approved, we would put the application up uh, before the end of business day to day. Um, so businesses have the weekend to fill it out and they can email, uh, email it into us. Um, that way when we receive it, it's time stamped already. So we'll be able to know uh, how those uh, came in. Um, application is very straightforward. It's about um, page long. It, um, it mirrors our current business grant that's already out there, that application that you approve for the small business grant. The only difference is we've put in the eligible businesses, so they would just check mark the box on which business they are, uh, <coughs> which category they're eligible under. Um, for the promotion of this, uh, this program, again, we'd send uh, Michael over at the chamber um, info that the uh, grant is live so you can get it out to his member new home journal uh, and other media outlets it'll be on our um, on our home page we'll put it out on facebook so that we can really get uh, the word out there um, that this program is available thank you chris anybody have any questions or concerns about this this is jessica um, i have a question mm -hmm. Um, I saw that it says businesses must have been closed due to the executive order. So would this um, exclude like restaurants where they're closed for dine-in but are still open for takeout? Or would it just be that they're impacted but not fully closed? It would be impacted, not fully closed because under the executive <coughs> order, they were supposed to close but they were able to still do the takeout and things like that. So um, it's anyone that is categorized under under those two executive orders okay thank you anybody else um, Chris I just wanted to clarify then too um, I know uh, the NUEDC was approached to look at participating in this program and I, I take it that they've decided not to uh, they have not uh, given me direction one way or another, um, but I think for this program, time is of the essence as payments are probably going to are going to be due soon for a lot of these businesses. Um, and, you know, I think once we get the program off the ground, uh, potentially the EDC will see what we're doing uh, and then uh, make a decision on whether or not they'd like to contribute to the program or not. Okay. And that's, that brings up my next question then, Chris. Um, uh, so you sounded like you said the application would be on the website as soon as possibly tonight. Um, and a, particip or a qualifying business, how soon would they have a check in their hands? Would you uh, anticipate? Potentially, uh, if we can get the applications in uh, Monday and Tuesday, uh, we'd be able to submit those uh, to finance uh, by Wednesday uh, to meet our check run. And a check potentially could be cut by Friday. Okay, so l less than a week probably, and I, I think that, that when you say time is of the essence, I, I have to agree, and I think that has to be, I would think, a very reasonable turnaround time. The, the other thing um, my thought is is that um, I, I would assume that this money is going to go rather quickly, and what I would wonder, and I guess ask the rest of the commissioners, this is a thought I would have, is that, perhaps we should continue to take applications even if the money is exhausted quickly and then maybe we could come back and revisit this issue um, dependent upon whether or not there's going to be participation by the NEDC but I would be willing to look at perhaps putting more money into this fund and, and continuing it for some time if the need is there um, and I guess I'd be interested to hear what other commissioners would think about that. This is Susan. I think that with the federal government and our Minnesota government acting very quickly on all of this stuff, that are we just putting a Band-Aid on this? Uh, my question is, how many small businesses do we have that it is actually affected? That number I don't have off the top of my head. Um, it is one of those kind of sore spots for me that we don't collect don't have a way of collecting data and it's something that we're looking to uh, remedy in the future but as of right now you know if we just take a look at restaurants there's about 32 restaurants in the city you know you figure 10 to 12 bars you know nair, nail and hair salons you're looking at probably 
10 to 12 of those as well. I mean, and that's already over the, the limit that um, we currently have, you know, that's not excluding, you know, excluding a lot of the other um, things under executive order 2008. So, um, you know, realistically, it's probably upwards of about 100 or so, 100 plus. Commissioner Fix, I would just, this is Audra um, chiming in a little bit, but just also, you know, there's the executive orders, which specifically list out certain types of business, which is sort of that direct impact um, of the executive orders. And then we have small businesses that are being negatively impacted further down the food chain, if you want to say that. Um, but, so this is really the group that got affected by the, the executive order have, have been affected the longest. And so that's why it's pretty specific to those listed out in that executive order. This is Jessica. Um, I would agree with Commissioner Brom about uh, that was one thing I had jotted down to. I'm, I'd like to see, you know, if we see 50, 60 applicants for this. Um, <clears throat> and it's first come first serve I, I guess i'd like to know if the need is greater than what we're um, looking at right now um if the edc is going to do something or would you know participate or do something with this as well that'd be great but um i'd really like to hear back as you get those applications in if there's a greater need than um what our hundred thousand would help with i know there are things that the state and federal government are working on. Um, I'm sure some of you else in the meeting can correct me if I'm wrong. What I've heard is a lot of those are loans to be repaid, whereas this would be a grant um, and would you know, be a different type of solution for these small businesses to help them. From what I understand, um, some of the federal loans are going to be forgivable um, if they're able to maintain their workforce. And I don't know over what period of time. And when um, Susan mentioned earlier that this is a Band-Aid, and I think that's exactly what this is. I think it's a bridge for us to get some money into the hands of these small businesses until such time as the other resources come online. I don't think in any way this is going to fix things, but I think it's going to just get us from where we are today to that point where those other resources come online and are available. Uh, the other thing that I am um, just curious if if we could um, also monitor if applications are received, but they not necessarily meet the criteria of the the business that's been closed down due to the order. If we could track those somehow and see if that there's maybe a, a secondary need from some, and maybe that was Audra that said that, you know, that I think there's some other business that have been impacted, but they may not necessarily have been ones that were directly impacted by the, the governor's order. And I think we should be just at least aware of that and cognizant of that. And if we start to see some of these other businesses being negatively impacted even though they may be open but their their activities there's their um you know with customers not being able to come out or whatever could potentially have um, a negative impact that we might want to look at the possibility of um, having a, a a second program uh, for for those types of business but that being said i think this first round um, we're right on target with what we want to do to get some money out and we want to first direct these funds to those businesses that have been negatively impacted due to that shutdown order. Thanks. This is Charlie. I guess I got a question too for Chris. I would assume since we got a maximum <coughs> amount of $2,500 that everybody will go for the max for one reason or another because if you can use it for utilities, inventory, marketing, and so on and so forth, and rent, mm -hmm. they're all going to basically qualify for the 2500 So we really would be limited two to 40 people. Yep, mm -hmm. that is correct. Yeah, um, the thought process, you know, was that it up to is probably not the right word. It would just be a $2,500 grant right. um, across the board. 
They don't pay it back. Nope. It's a, it's just a grant. Grant money. Yep. yep. <clears throat> Anybody else got any questions, concerns out there? Oh, this is last. I buzzed in a little late. Um, I'm supporting what we're doing here. I think it any little help for some of these employers. We have to keep our try and keep as many doors open as we can downtown. We can't afford to lose any more. Sounds good. Um, <clears throat> if we're concerned the money might run out, you do have the option to approve more than $100,000 this round to prevent us from having to come back if you, if you wanted to. Well, we're going to have another regular meeting um, second Tuesday in April. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I would think if there's a need, we could have it addressed by that time. Is that... Or do you think it might need to happen sooner than that? It's up to you. I'm okay with setting more money aside right now, too, I guess. Yeah, um, but that's up to you. I mean, it, it really, we can kind of, either you can improve more money now, um, or you can look at, you know, we can see how many apps we're getting in above and beyond what we have. And if we're starting to get a really large number, you know, let's say more than 10, um, then we can look at holding another special meeting, but um, you have that power to make that decision right now whether you want to increase the funding um, or well, well, wait. I guess Chris, I had a just question. Just by the numbers that you rattled off, it sounded like we've got at least probably over 100 businesses that could potentially use this help. I'm sure. Yeah. Potentially, yeah. You know, so if you, I mean, a, a safe you, estimate would, I I'm would sorry, say would be about 200,000. That'll get you to 80. And then we can see if we want to go above and beyond that, you know, as the applications roll in, might be a, a good way to go. Have we checked, Chris, with any other communities? Are they doing similar programs? Or not that we have to check with them, I'm just asking. The only one that I know of, Audra found, and they were doing about $500, um, I think. And that was more just for help with utility, mm -hmm. utility payments. Um, you know, I think right now, just looking at how things are kind of panning out in our community, um, a lot of the businesses that need the assistance, they're not able to make their rent payments. You know, we have the utilities, um, you know, their bills, you know, kind of that trickle down effect of everything that, um, they're worried about paying. Um, and I'd like, you know, I think 2,500 is a good number to help them kind of hopefully get through to that may 1st shutdown date mm -hmm. um, so they can open up and operate again but it also be the again that band-aid for them to apply for those loans hopefully get approved and have that money uh influx of of cash as well so um i wouldn't okay. be opposed to to this group you know increasing that amount to about two hundred thousand. but i thought a hundred thousand was kind of a palatable number to start with and we can work our way up from there Commissioner Schmitz, through some regional de economic development people, we've been talking, and there are other com communities that are moving in this direction. Um, there's some that are right at the amount of 2,500 that we are at, um, and they're doing loans, grants, a mixture of things. Um, it's all, I think, a matter of the timeliness, recognizing that small business um, needs this process to move quickly. So, but yes, we are. I felt very comfortable that we are right in the the thick of it I guess those I communities kind of were agree. smaller than us and bigger than yeah. us so. rather to come back I mean if we have the even if we do 200 that don't mean we're going to spend it but at least it's available mm -hmm. and we don't have to come back in a, another week or so and then mm -hmm. do this all over again so I think this what's fair for one should be fair for everybody we shouldn't have to really cut anybody off say okay you came in too late you know I don't know so I, Can I, I ask where should... the $2,500 amount came from? I think it was just a, an amount that I feel kind of covers, would cover most business expenses, rent, utilities, any bills that they may have to pay due to the shutdown, you know, cover some of the, um, some of the payroll as well. So kind of just everything all wrapped into one. It's not going to pay for everything, but it'll help them pay the bills they need to pay that are going to be due in the next couple of in the next couple of weeks and we looked at this is Idra monthly fixed expenses which are the things that Chris just mentioned um, you know significant hours of conversation have gone around this with other 
entities in the same realm and you know there's an amount that seems too little like a postage stamp kind of and then there's an amount that seems not too much but it just didn't seem that that was the right fit so we kind of landed in the middle um, and just taking into account monthly fixed expenses that's fine I was just curious I know when I was at the last chamber meeting the for example the Best Western talked about losses of over a hundred thousand dollars in the first two weeks of this um, so I mean that's on the big side of end so again with this would 2500 be a postage stamp yeah probably and in, in their eyes but um, to a small business like you know Rodney's for example that's closed 2500 might uh, might help pay like I said his electric and a few bills but so mm -hmm. I'm just curious I didn't know if there was a recommended amount that came from somewhere I, again, this is Dan. I think this is kind of a bridge. I don't think it's going to necessarily um, fix all of the wrongs and all of the ills, but my thought is is it's going to just get them to the point where these other resources, both federal and state, are going to come online and, and, and hopefully get us from where we are today to that particular point. Um, and, and that's, I guess, I think locally we can be real flexible and real adaptive and move in really quick. And I think that that's the thing that we can offer. Um, I, I uh, you know, at this point, I'm in my mind, I'm kind of wrestling between do we do 200 or 250,000? Because 250,000 would get 100 businesses. And if Chris has said it sounded like there's about 100 businesses impacted, then we may have at least that segment. And I think. This is more towards small businesses. I think larger businesses may have more resources and, and, and a better ability to negotiate with the various entities that they have to deal with, unlike a smaller business that don't have those sort of resources at their disposal. So I don't know. That's where I'm thinking anyway. What's the turn? Maybe you mentioned this before I got on, but what's your turnaround time from application to the check in their hand. If we can get the applications in uh, by Monday or Tuesday, we can submit that for our normal weekly um, check run uh, by Wednesday, and checks should be able to go out, uh, mailed out on Friday. So checks only go out on Wednesdays? Checks go out on Fridays, yes. On Fridays. Yep. Because I think some of the, can we speed that up at all? Well, we do run checks on Wednesdays. There's not a normal Thursday check run next week, but we do run checks every Wednesday. So if we have everything in hand, the checks could be cut by the end of the day, Wednesday, and mailed. Or on Friday. No, we don't normally cut checks on Friday, but we can do extra check runs if yeah. we don't get them all on time. So, I mean, Janine's not going to want to do 16 different check runs, but yeah. if we can do them in batches and as we get them, I mean, they can go right, out sooner. Right. This is Susan. I think it's. I'm sorry. This is Susan. I think if we're going to do it for one business or ten small businesses that have been affected by this executive order to 20-4 and 20-8, I think we need to do it for all small businesses that have been affected, but only having to do with those uh, executive orders. And my question is, who? How is this going to be vetted to make sure that that is the case? I mean, considering the volume we should have, because I would hope every business in New Ulm would go after that i mean it just takes a little bit of time but i hope that they would do it if they fall into that category so uh, so yeah I'm, I'm looking at the two hundred and fifty thousand as well and tap it at that for now that should give everybody a good chance yeah so part of the application um we do list uh the businesses that are affected by those executive orders so they will have to check mark what category they fall into it's part of the application and it's it's listed on there so they'll will be e easily identifiable what category they they fall into this is jessica um yeah i i think we really need to show our support for our businesses by getting this out here and thank you for calling this special meeting so we can get some quick turnaround time to help them um i think the more we can do now the better um just from hearing the conversations already i'll go ahead and um, make a motion to set aside or uh, create an emergency relief fund 
starting with $250,000 to assist local select businesses impacted by COVID-19. This is last, I'll second that. We do have a motion and a second. Anybody else have any more discussion? <coughs> See none? All in favor say aye. Uh, uh, roll call. Roll, roll call, aye. sorry. We have to do a roll call. <laughs> Not used to this yet. <laughs> Commis Commissioner Brum. Yes. Commissioner Fix. Yes. Commissioner Yanni. Yes. Commissioner Schultz. Yes. President Schmitz. Yes. Motion carries. So now we have a. I got to get back in here on my computer. We have an addendum also. Let's see if I can get it up here. All right, we have one item on the addendum, so I suppose we need to suspend the rules and go for it, Les. I'll uh, offer a motion to suspend the rules to take on the addendum. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. No, roll. Oh, roll call. Oh, oh, roll call again. <laughs> <laughs> Heather. Commissioner Brom. Yes. Commissioner Fix. Yes. Commissioner Yanni. Yes. Commissioner Schultz. Yes. President Schmitz. Yes, motion carries. Okay, we'll go on to the addendum item, and it's a suspend EDA loan payments. Chris? So, um, again, uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic and the executive orders, um, we have received um, one uh, individual who, who basically has stated they uh, have not made any money this month and need to um, – asked if we can suspend uh, their rehab loan. Um, so looking at this just overall, um, just because um, businesses haven't been able to make money, I think this is a very small thing that we can do. And actually on the proposed action, we have April and May, but because a lot of the businesses now are gonna be closed through May 1st, um, I would like to actually extend um, the suspension so payments Resu would resume July 1st. And so basically we're not forgiving any payments, we're just deferring those payments and extending their uh, pay schedule for those months, but giving um, the property owners and the businesses that have either a commercial rehab or a limited loan at this time, some relief um, so their tenants can get back up and, and going. Um, and then uh, the one that has the limited loan can get back online and make those payments um, because as of right now, I don't think we have anyone that's ever missed a payment. Uh, so giving them that little bit of relief until July 1st, I think will help those businesses out. I guess this I, is I, Susan, I make a, go ahead. This is Susan. I make, I make a motion for a three month suspension of the EDA loan payments for April, May and June. And I think this is great. Thank you. I'll second that for discussion. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Go ahead. Yes, I, I think it should be longer than that. And let, if you really think that we're going to turn the light switch back on for our employers in May, um, that's really only giving them one month to try and pay some bills off. And now here comes this EDA bill. I, I, we're sitting pretty well financially. Uh, businesses won't be. Um, I think it should be longer than the 90 days. I, I feel up, I feel better on four or five months even. Um, I just think we got to help where we can. Okay. Uh, Chris, I just have a couple questions about um, with payment deferrals on these notes. Um, are is interest going to accrue over the time that these payments aren't due then, and then be um, required to be paid once the payments are resumed? No. So essentially, we're we're stopping almost like their loan goes away for those three months and then we'll just add it ex kind of moving their loan payment just out. And so it's like their loan doesn't exist for whatever time period. And then it'll be up and running again. So, so it, would it make more sense than just to have payment forgiveness for those months? And in essence, the EDA just pick up and pay those monthly payments. And then when they resume, they would be they would re, um, return to that regular payment schedule so that um, there isn't any 
extension of their or maturity date passed. I, in the in the lending game, you know, we call this like a forbearance. And what happens is is there's two different ways to handle that. One would be at the resumption of the payments, they would owe all the payments that were due and that were suspended for that period of time. And it doesn't sound like that's what we want to do at all. The second method would be to tack those payments on the end of the original loan contract. So say we, we do four or six, well then those notes would go out additional four or six months. So what I'm thinking is, is could we just put that money in and say, we'll take care of those payments for that amount of time. And that way they can resume payments and then stay on their original schedule. So I don't know. I, I just want to make sure we're clear on how we want to proceed with this. And I think it's a great idea, however we do it, but I just want to make sure that we do the most amount of good that we can at this particular point. Yeah. I mean, that would, what would it cost us to eat those? Idea. We don't know off the top of our head. We can email that information out. Um, so either we if we would we, take the payments oh, okay. for those months and then just have their normal payment schedule, or the original was to what we planned was just stopping their payments yeah. and adding okay. them on at the end. So essentially, so could we for today's um, issue? Could we extend it by the three or four months, um, and then maybe look, take a second look? Have you guys look at that amount and the potential forgiveness at our next meeting? Yeah. I guess I'd support that. That way, at least we know what we're, we have numbers to compare to. Yep. And this, um, these loans impact 18 businesses. So that's what we're talking 18 about. 18 businesses? 18. Okay. okay. So yeah, I'd, I'd want to know that number before we made that decision. Um, so if we're going to do that, maybe the, the motion's already still out there for 90 days, and maybe that's fine. We could always extend that as well. So maybe we just leave the motion as is, and we can extend, extend it another 30 or 60 at a future meeting. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring that information to the, the, the April meeting. Yeah, okay. Okay, any more discussion? This is Jessica. Um, I just wanted to say that that sounds good. I, I would wanna see that information next meeting because I'm sure, you know, number of loans and different payment amounts and terms. So um, if you have that next month, that'd be great. Anybody else? Seeing none, Heather, please call the roll. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Yanni? Yes. Commissioner Schultz? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes, motion carries. I guess at this time we have nothing else we want to discuss. So we'll call the meeting adjourned. Go ahead. Excuse me, can I bring up a suggestion? Is it possible that we can zoom so that we can see actually, um, you know, like the uh, the material we're supposed to be looking at, like the financials and things like that, because they can be recorded as well. Is that anything possible? I know IT yeah. has, they've thought about it. We don't have the technology in place to make that work right now, but most of the meetings can be aired live. So you could watch it on TV as you're on the phone and that might be as close as we get for right now. Yeah. We are exploring other options in case this needs to be extended. If you are by a TV, right, we are live right now, actually. We made this one live. So. On the I TV? Just, yeah. I think we could look into it or have Roger look into it because we're running court through Zoom or through WebEx right now. We did, um, Zoom, you run into a problem. Proceedings, so I don't know why that'd be any different for a city meeting. Zoom cuts you off at 40 minutes, though, too, so. Well, it's fourteen ninety nine for a month's contract, so it's, I think the city could afford that. Or actually, twenty ninety nine if you want ten hosts for a month. So, I think we're moving down this direction. I think we're going to need a lot of Zoom meetings, and and um, I know we're doing it here at the city or the county. People are doing WebEx and Zooms all over the place. So, I can't. This is probably my third or fourth one today. Okay. So some type of calling thing. We're just everything's moving to this. So, but I I agree with uh, Sue. I think it'd be just a lot easier to kind of pull up your document and see what everybody's looking at at the same time. And I'm I'm sort of getting familiar with Zoom more and more the more I'm doing it. So, um, it is pretty pretty user friendly. 
Well, it's the first time I heard about it, so <laughs> I'm not. Well, there, but. And there's more. I didn't know about Zoom 10 days ago, Charlie, and I hosted a meeting with 25 people today, and I did pretty darn good. Good. Um, we'll learn. There's also, there's also Skype for Business is another one that's real popular. Um, so that one was floated around amongst my directors today, and that a lot of people are using that. That's not just the one that freebie app at the, mm -hmm. the paid for app so i think we can just have chris kind of talk to our data people here and see what we can come up with get some ideas yeah because it's it's where we're going for the next two three months so mm -hmm. and we do have a council meeting coming up next week or whatever so we can always throw stuff on the agendas right right okay thanks right. everybody yep but no more business yeah yeah go ahead Oh. I just want to thank the city staff. They put this meeting together and get the information um, and, and, and the urgency of it. I think you guys did a great job and thank you. Yes, absolutely. And thanks for letting me call in today. Uh, otherwise, I was going to sit this one out. So I, I, I'm, I'm so happy I was able to participate. All right. Yeah, thank you. No more business. Meeting adjourned.